What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TCP Ravens Media, bringing Ravens content every single day. If you want to stay updated the Ravens content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell if you want to get notified every single time I upload a brand new video because whenever there's Ravens news, stuff like that, I'll try and get that out as fast as possible. No Ravens news today. What I wanted to talk about, it's kind of a two-part uh, series. So the second video will come out tomorrow. I put out a poll on the channel. So if you're not subscribed, you probably didn't see the poll. If you are subscribed, um, thank you to everybody who voted. Um, the results came in and it's you guys wanted to see the three most surprising Ravens so far this season first. But tomorrow's video, unless there's Ravens news, um, if honestly, it'll, it'll be uploaded tomorrow. Uh, if there's Ravens news, there will be two videos. But I will be talking about the three most disappointing Ravens so far this season. And this is something that could very well change in a week, two weeks, a month. By the end of the year, these players in this video, you know, the most surprising, they may fall off. They may not be as good by the end of the year. And then same with the vice versa in terms of the disappointing players where, you know, maybe they're disappointing right now, but by the end of the year, we're like, wow, they really impressed us. Okay. So this is like, as an, as of right now, this is how I'm feeling. And also there were a lot more, especially for this video, for the most surprising, there were a lot more than three. There were a lot more than three, but I didn't want to spend one minute talking about eight different players and making a short video. And I apologize. My phone's going off. I honestly don't know where it is. Um, so hopefully it doesn't go off too many times, but let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think because there's plenty of more players that I can't talk about. But the first player that I feel like has been the biggest surprise has been Chuck Clark. And I'm a big fan of Chuck Clark. I've talked about, I feel like he's going to be a part of this team for a very long time because he calls the defense. He's very important to this team. And in my opinion, he's stepped up in the level that I think people were expecting Deshaun Elliott to step up in. And this isn't tr me trying to criticize Deshaun Elliott, but I think everybody's looking at Deshaun Elliott like, wow, we're really going to have a safety this year that's able to make big plays and go crazy, um, you know, make a lot of big tackles, have some like really important moments. Elliott hasn't gotten to do that yet, but Chuck Clark really has. And if you, if you watched the Raiders game, Chuck Clark dominated the first half of that Raiders game. Dominated. He was everywhere. And that's not something that he's been known for in his career. He's been always been decent against the run. He's never been great in coverage, but he's actually been pretty good in coverage this year. He's made a lot of plays on the football when it's in the air. He's gone up and swatted some passes. And that's something that the Ravens can really look at with that spot and how they run their defense with the amount of man coverage that they run and realize, you know what? We actually have a, a playmaker in our secondary in Chuck Clark that we can rely on. And in addition to that, his sure tackling has been very nice, especially when he got the sack on Jared Goff, him being able to come up the middle. And I had full confidence he'd be able to wrap him up and bring him down. And that's exactly what he did. I feel like Chuck Clark is just being that guy that we need him to be. And I think a lot of people, they were expecting Chuck Clark to kind of be the odd man out in the secondary this year. And this is before the Marcus Peters injury then. Um, but everybody was like, yeah, this, you know, could be Chuck Clark's last year because Deshaun Elliott will ball out. Uh, we'll resign Elliott. Then he may switch over to strong safety. Brandon Stevens takes free safety. And then Chuck Clark's kind of evaporating into Nothing. I don't know. He's just not on the team anymore. But instead, he's really showing why he is a pivotal part of this team. And I've always been a big fan of him. So most surprising, I got to say, Chuck Clark really stepping up. Um, I, I, I liked him before he stepped up. I liked him the last few years, but he's really stepped up this year. And I love watching him. Second most surprising player has got to be Adafe away. And I loved the Adafe away draft pick. I talked about it a lot, how he can really be a, a pivotal piece for the Baltimore Ravens for years to come. However, even with that, I did not expect him to have the level of impact that he's had early on in this season. He's playing a lot more than I expected him to play, and he's playing a lot better than I expected him to play. You know, everybody talked about, oh, he didn't have any sacks at Penn State. I was never worried about that. That was not one of my criticisms. One of my criticisms was basically that he doesn't have a lot of technique. However, he's a player that can create chaos, but I still didn't expect him to have you know, crazy impacts on games, but instead he has had two of his games were amazing. He played great against the Raiders. He played great against the chiefs played decently against the Lions, but the Lions game is very tricky because the Ravens had like no outside linebackers. So it wasn't like he had really good edge rushes that he was being paired with. It's not like he had Justin Houston on the other side. It's not like he had 
um, really anybody on the other side other than like Tyus Bowser um, and I believe Pernell McPhee and a little bit of Dalen Hayes before he got hurt. So the, the level of players that he was playing with was decreased, but he's gone out there and he's made plays and he's gotten some sacks. He showed off his athleticism and he has shown that it wasn't just track speed because I think one of the biggest things that a lot of players have when they come into the NFL is they had a great combine. Look at that. He ran so fast. He lifted so much. He was so quick. They get to the NFL and you're like, where is that speed? Some guys play a lot faster than they are. Some guys play a lot stronger than they are. I think the perfect example of that is, a, is a Orlando Brown Jr., who had one of the worst combines in NFL history. But he came out and he comes to the NFL and I was like, oh, in-game is fine. Adolphe Away comes out, dominates uh, pro days, dominates him. Gets into the NFL and everyone's like, oh, but his technique is not really there. And he's come out and he has shown that he is able to track down the quarterback and wrap them up. And that's one of the biggest things that the Ravens have had problems with is when the quarterback gets out of the pocket, being able to actually chase them down and get the sack or make that play. He chased down Derek Carr. He chased down Patrick Mahomes. And Patrick Mahomes made the poor decision to try and flick it up. Like, I don't even know how to describe the pass he tried to throw. He just kind of threw it up there. Tavon Young's able to come down with the pick. But that all started with Adafi away and his speed being able to actually get after the quarterback and he's been able to, he's been chasing guys down when they roll out of the pocket. He has just come out and just been as advertised and more with that athleticism and his drive to get better each and every week. And I, I can't wait to watch him through the rest of the season. I can't wait to watch him for the rest of his career because he is a lot of fun to watch. And I think a lot of people are learning the name Adafe away because everybody looked at this draft class at the edge rush and they were like, guys that'll make instant impact. Aziz Ojulari, Jalen Phillips, Quiddy Pay. Guys that won't make an, uh, an impact early. Adafi away, Gregory Rousseau. Hmm. The two most productive edge rushers so far were the guys that weren't supposed to be good early on. Guys that were athletic freaks in nature. I'm okay with it because we did get Adafi away and I'm very happy about it. So Adafi away, second biggest surprise for the Baltimore Ravens this season. And then looking at it for the third biggest surprise, there were so many guys that I felt like I could have gone with, whether it was Anthony Averett and his like actual ability to stop the ball and, you know, play the ball when it's in the air. And it was like, oh my goodness, we're finally getting it. It's finally happening. But overall, then it like, I felt like that is not as big of an improvement because we all knew Anthony Averett had the talent. Um, we all know it. He he could cover. He just needed the ball skills. He's, he's shown he's got the ball skills. I got to go with the center. I have to go with Bradley Bozeman. He has come in and he has been, I, I believe PFF has, has him as the highest graded Raven so far. He has like a 100% pass block win rate, above 70% run block win rate. And that was one of the biggest concerns on the offensive line going into this year is like, can he return to his Alabama form? Because he hasn't played center in the NFL ever. And it's been a while, but he came in and he has been exceptional. The snaps have been good. The blocks have been clean. And he's been a bright spot for that offensive line. Him and I would say Kevin Zeitler have been the only two guys that I felt like have played really solid. Zeitler hasn't been perfect. Bozeman hasn't been perfect. But they've been like, I am completely okay with how they've been playing. And Bradley Bozeman, yes, he was really good at left guard. Um, he could have stayed at left guard, but we needed a center and him stepping up and actually perform because there were a lot of people that were like, he's really good at center. Do we really want him to switch and possibly not be as good at, um, you know, or he's really good at left guard. Do we want him to switch and possibly not be as good at as center as he was at left guard? And he, I think he's been just as good. And that's allowing the Ravens, you know, they had Tyree Phillips obviously in there early on, got hurt. Um, and now it's kind of the the Ben uh, conversation and who's actually going to be able to take over. But Riley Bozeman, that's that was one of the most important needs of this offseason was getting a center that can get the ball to Lamar Jackson. And that's exactly what he's been doing. And he's been blocking pretty darn good with that. But that's going to be it for this video. Make sure to come back tomorrow. Let me know the disappointing um, players, you know, in that video. But comment down below what you guys think. Is there another surprising player?
that you want to talk about. Hey, this guy's really balled out. Um, please comment it down below. And then also, if you want to make predictions for disappointing players, you can comment that as well. But thank you, everybody, for watching. Subscribe for Daily Ravens content. Make sure to come to the live stream before and after the game against the Denver Broncos. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you all for watching. I'll see all of you again tomorrow.